Hi everyone, my name is Ben and welcome to the Barn Owl Creative, where we talk about everything 5th edition. Today I want to go over my most recent TikTok character build video because I had to go super fast in that one and I don't think I did it quite enough justice. So this character was given to me as a challenge by somebody in my comments. They wanted to see if I could come up with a build that could one-shot a Tarrasque. So I did. Now disclaimer before we move forward, this is obviously not a real super viable character build. This is just for fun. If you try and do this in a real campaign, you're probably not actually going to have that much fun in the campaign itself. Just putting that one out there for you. So, without further ado, let's get into it. So first up, we're going to be a half-orc, and we're going to customize our origin via the method in Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. Our strength score is going to go up by one, and our charisma score is going to go up by two. Everything else can stay the same, because what we want to do is pick up savage attacks here. So for all of my experimental builds, I use standard array so that there's no question about where I get these ability scores from. So what our spread is going to be is Strength 12, Dexterity 14, Constitution 10, Intelligence 8, Wisdom 13, and Charisma 15. So from there, we're ready to start actually picking our classes now. First, we're going to go three levels into Rogue, pick up Expertise in Stealth and Sleight of Hand, and we're going to go down the Assassin path so that we pick up Assassinate. Now, in case you're not 100% sure what Assassinate does, it gives you advantage on any attacks against any creature that hasn't taken a turn yet in combat, and any attack against a surprised creature that hits is considered a critical hit. This will be important because this is a theoretical build, and we're assuming ideal conditions for our attack. From there, we will go three levels into Fighter, where at first level we will pick up Superior Technique as our fighting style and pick Distracting Strike, anything that allows us to add to the damage of our weapon. At second level, we will get Action Surge, which is important, and at third level, we will go with Eldritch Knight. Now, that isn't so much important for spells and features and stuff like that, as it is to round up our spellcasting level at the end of this. Our next jump is going to be two levels into Paladin, where we're going to pick up Divine Smite. That's it from here. That's really all we need. You can use any level of spell slot for Divine Smite, so we really just need the feature to be available to us. From there, we're going to go three levels into Cleric, where we're going to go Grave Domain so that we pick up the Channel Divinity option, Path to the Grave. The third level is just for the spell slot levels, because at this point it'll give us level three spell slots. In case you don't know what Path to the Grave does, you curse a creature within 30 feet of you until the end of your next turn. The next time you or an ally hits that creature with an attack, it has vulnerability to all of the damage in that attack, and then the curse ends, which means that you are doubling up on all of the damage dealt in that one attack. And finally, we are going to round this character out with nine levels in Warlock, where we will go Hexblade and Pact of the Blade. At this level in Warlock, we should have access to five different Eldritch Invocations, but we only really need two of them. We need Improved Pact Weapon and Eldritch Smite. At this point, we also have two ability score increases to deal with, and we're going to take feats for both of them. The first one is going to be Orcish Fury, which is a half-orc racial feat, we're going to take that with a bump to our Strength score, and then we're going to take Piercer with a bump to our Dexterity score for our other one. And that's all of the class features that we're going to need wrapped up. From there, we only need to pick two spells off of the Warlock spell list, the Cantrip Booming Blade, and the fifth level spell, Banishing Smite, that is only available to Paladins and Hexblade Warlocks. Now the last thing for the actual build that you're going to need is to pick up a Rapier, which will end up being your Pact Weapon for your Pact of the Blade. So. From there, let's see how this works. Now we're going to assume ideal conditions for this because that is just how this sort of theoretical thing works. So, a Tarrasque has a passive perception of 10 and a perception modifier of 0. Your base stealth modifier is plus 14, which means that you can roll anything and beat its passive perception. And if you roll a 7 or higher, you beat out its perception roll straight out. There is no way that it can see you with a roll above 7. Using that logic, we are going to assume that you can get the drop on it and surprise it and use your assassinate feature. The Tarrasque doesn't have anything in its stat block like an alert feature that says that it can't be surprised, which means that it is, in fact, still susceptible to surprise, despite the fact that it is a titan. The way that this is going to work is you're going to cast Banishing Smite on your packed weapon. Then you're going to go into stealth, sneak up to the Tarrasque, Use your Channel Divinity Path to the Grave, which at no point says it has any verbal, somatic, or material components. It doesn't even say that you have to present your holy symbol, it just happens. And then Action Surge to cast Booming Blade, where you make a melee attack as part of casting the spell. So let's break down some damage for this. 
your rapier is going to deal 1d8 damage. Booming Blade is going to deal another 3d8 damage. Banishing Smite is going to deal 5d10 damage. You're going to pump a 5th level Eldritch Smite into it for an additional 6d8. A 3rd level Divine Smite for 4 more d8. Orcish Fury for 1 more d8. Sneak Attack for 2d6. And finally, Distracting Strike for an additional d6. So totaling up your average rolls and maximum rolls on both of those, you end up with 105.5 points of damage for your average, or 188 for your max. Now, that's a critical hit, so it should go up to 211 points, or 376 points of damage. Now, this being a critical hit also sets off Piercer and Savage Attacks, adding in an additional d8 per. That additional damage brings our new totals to 220 and 392. Now add in your modifiers for 225 and 397, and you're pretty much at max damage, right? Well, this is where Path to the Grave kicks in, doubling up each of them. That makes your new totals 450 and 794. Now a Tarask has 676 hit points, which means it's gone. Of course, that does assume that you'd roll max damage, which, again, ideal conditions, you would. However, that's not obviously going to be the case. But, if you roll above average, you should be pretty close to alright, because the other thing about Banishing Smite is that if you reduce the creature to 50 hit points or fewer, it is banished from the plane. So, really, the threshold number you're trying to hit here is 626. I really enjoyed making this character. I spent a lot of time reading and trying different combinations to figure it out just so. I'm going to leave a link to the character in the description below in case you want to check it out. Again, it's really not that viable of a character to use in a campaign. It's just not. It's really built to do this one thing really well and that's it. Let me know what you think and let me know what else you want to see in the comments down below. If you haven't already and you enjoy what I'm doing, please subscribe. Your support means the world to me. I do my best to upload videos every Friday, so come back then to see what's next. Until then, keep on rolling.